is my pleasure to present the outstanding personality in my profession, the master of the clarinet, Benny Goodman and his famous swing band. <laughs> My name's Alan Wicks. I run uh, Sweet Memories in Ormskirk with my sister Gail. Uh, we've been here now a month. We, we opened on the 4th of January, just after Christmas. Well, we just thought there was, was, was a market there in Ormskirk that there is no sweet shops. Um, we just thought there was a market there for the old type of sweets that people can't get anywhere else. Uncle Joe's Mint Balls. Have been for years. <laughs> Uncle Joe's Mint Balls in Wigan. And I can tell you a little story about that. During the war, <coughs> there was the Home Guard, and my uncle was a member of the Home Guard. And I'd been to church with my auntie on Sunday morning, and we'd got these mint balls, which were on ration, and uh, the, the Home Guard sort of stopped us going down this road, and they said, we're arresting you um, as aliens, you know. Um, and we said, oh, why? And they said, because we want your mint balls. <laughs> And they took these mint balls off us. But they, then they took us into a, a hut where the, the headquarters, and there was some cocoa in a bucket. So, in exchange for the mint balls, we got a cup of cocoa out of a bucket. <laughs> You're asking me to think back a long way now because uh, I was a little girl during the war, and sweets were very hard to come by. But if ever there was a delivery, word would go around the neighbourhood, and we would all rush and fall in great queues. And my favourite sweet was Wrigley's. Um, spearmint chews? Well, when I was a child, the town I come from is a cotton town, and facing the school, we had a massive sweet shop. It was paradise when you went in. The best part was when we got our Friday penny to go and chew sweets in the shop. My mother went on a trip, and she met two sailors, and they said to her, had she any cigarettes? Well, she didn't smoke, but she had some from her father. And she said, yes, she would let them have it. So they gave her two packets of Maltesers. And the first time I tasted them, I mustn't have had sweets. I must have been quite young, and I haven't had sweets for a long time. And they tasted absolutely delicious. We were lucky because the lady next door, her husband, worked, uh, her uncle, worked at a sweet factory. So they gave the um, sweet coupons to us, so we were fortunate. We were three girls, so we, you know, it made our life a lot more bearable, I think. Uh, Palm tree breath cakes for my wife and Uncle Joe's mint balls for myself. <laughs> they are Palm tree cakes, my very, very favourites. Yes, yeah. that's why I've got brown teeth. <laughs> um, when you were younger, did you come to sweet shops like this? Oh, yes. Well, when we were younger, there was only these kind of sweet shops. Really, yeah. But then there was sweet rationing on as well. Mm. During the war. Desperation, pacification, <laughs> expectation, acclamation and realisation. I was born in 1949 and I think rationing came off in 1954. So my mother would roll a piece of paper up in a cone and we'd have drink and chocolate with some sh sugar inside. Or cocoa with some sugar. We'd dip our fingers in that. That was our way of sweets as well. Um, I think mostly licorice ones, actually. Um, I'll do because they're a great variety of licorice ones, sort of Pontefract cakes, little round ones. Um, there was sherbet dips, which are still around, but you got a little bag full of sherbet and a licorice tube inside. So you could either suck it up and spread it on top of all over everybody else, or you could dip it in, take it out, have it. And then there were the thick licorice sticks, which you chewed on forever. Right? Yeah. Um, probably, I still am a fan of licorice, by the way. So, <coughs> I'm um, not far away from where I live. I lived in Liverpool, near Ancient Bazaxley Hospital. And um, I don't know, about five minutes away was a little sweet shop in a row of five shops. And it was called Jake's, with the French spelling Jake's, G -G -E. And that was just a little family shop. And they just sold sweets, actually, um, sell anything else. You got your pocket money, and one of the things you did was buy sweets with it. Or, or go to the cinema with it, actually. You didn't get very much, but it didn't cost much there, of course. Um, so it was me going, probably with friends or something, and they waited eagerly, or I waited for them, to see what they were going to get. There was an old shop in Liverpool by um, the old Dippodrome Picture House, and it was run by a family business of about 150 years, and they actually made the sweets, which were made in the back of the shop, and then brought out on trays, and the sweets were cut up in front of you and you bought whatever you wanted, two ounces, whatever. Used to come in the little pokey bags, 
fried up. But they were my favourites there, from the coconut candy particularly. That was lovely. The best seller really is probably uh, bonbons. Um, the kids seem to like uh, the raspberry bonbons, which are blue, and the Vimto bonbons, which, as I say, we just can't keep up with demand sometimes. There's one called Cherry Lips. And I used to get these and go drop them on your lips, like lipstick. <laughs> well, I think it sticks in my mind. Um, you have them now, they'd probably be health and safety notice on them because you, you put them in your mouth and your whole mouth is filled with those. And then they would suck them and suck them and suck them and used to change colour as you suck them. You keep taking them out and having a look at them in mouth. Well, it was always nice to get a bag of mixed sweets and share them out around the table, you know. But they were all this type of old type of sweets. There weren't many what you call chocolate sweets. They were all like hard boiled sweets and sherbet types. From our, from our past when we were families, a Saturday night used to be a night in with a fries cream bar, which we sell, and deciding which of the three channels that we were going to watch on television that night. Uncle Joe's mint balls were made in Fod Lane. Uh, where I, the school where I went to, and when they took the lid off to turn the toppy over, we used to get all the smell in the street and in the school. Mm. Which the children used to love it, but they used to want the sweets as well. It takes us back a lot, this, yeah. uh, this sweet shop. It does really.